This video is going to show you how to identify resistors that are in parallel and how to add them up. There are two basic rules. The first idea is the voltage used up by each resistor is the same. The second idea is for helping us to identify the resistors is that when we're looking at them, we're going to need junctions this time. Now remember, when electrical charge travels through a circuit, it uses up energy, so it's given some initial amount, and every time it crosses any type of electrical component, such as resistors, it uses up some of that energy. And that's what this little video clip is showing you, is how the energy is used up as it travels through the circuit. If I look at the first circuit on the upper left, all these circuits are in parallel. That is, they all use up the same amount of voltage. So if I took my finger and I started at 10 volts and worked down to the resistors, I can see that that 10 volt line is on the top of the resistors. And on the bottom is ground, and that's going to be 0 volts. So every resistor is going to use up 10 volts. It goes from 10 to 0, because that's the difference in the voltage on the two sides of the resistors. In the middle circuit, it's the same idea. They're also in parallel. They use up 10 volts. The 10, all four are in parallel with each other. So the 300, the 600, the 1200, and the 200 are all in parallel. And 11, they're also all in parallel. And finally, on the 12 volt, I mean number 12, it's 100 volts. And it starts off at 100, and on the other side, it goes to zero. So all six of those resistors are in parallel with each other. Let's see what happens when I make it not parallel. So I add a 6 ohm resistor. If I look at this, Starting with the 10 volt line, the 4 and the 8 are 10 volts on the top and 0 volts on the bottom, so they're both going to use up 10 volts. That's going to make them in parallel. But the 2 ohm resistor is no longer in parallel, because it has to have some voltage left over for the 6 ohm resistor. So let's say the 2 ohm resistor uses up 2 volts. So that leaves 8, ohm, 8 volts left over for that 6 ohm resistor. So the point is that with that 6 ohm resistor, it's no longer using up the same amount of voltage. Now an easy way to look at this is to trace a line. If I can trace from the top of the resistors without crossing another resistor and the bottom of the resistors without going to another resistor, then it's in parallel. So I can go from the top of the 8 to the top of the 4 without crossing another resistor. I can go to the bottom of the 8 to the bottom of the 4 without crossing another resistor. That makes them in parallel. I can go to the top of the 4 to the top of the 2 without crossing another resistor. That's great. But when I connect the bottom of the 2 to the bottom of the 4, I have to go across the 6. The 6 use up voltage. It, it doesn't work anymore. So that means the 2 and the 6 are no longer in parallel with the other resistors. Okay, find the total resistance or the equivalent resistance for parallel resistors. So what I'm going to do is replace my collection with one resistor and i got to find out its value. To figure it out, I add up all the resistors, the inverses, and then that's the inverse of the answer. So the inverse of the answer is the sum of the inverses. So if you look at the formula, it makes sense. 1 over RE is equal to 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2 plus 1 over R3, etc. Let's look at an example problem. I've got there's one little circuit here, three resistors, they're all in parallel with each other. So I'm going to replace these three resistors with one resistor. To add them up, I'll have the inverse of 2 plus the inverse of 4 plus the inverse of 8, find a common denominator, and I get 1 over the answer is equal to 7 eighths. So I flip both sides of the equation, and I get the answer is equal to 8 sevenths of an ohm. Now let's look at how to draw the resistors that are in parallel. This is one of the things you're going to be doing a lot of. So I've got this compound circuit. Some are in series, some are in parallel. So to draw them in parallel, I'm going to be looking for the junctions. And I've got to identify, well, first, which ones are in parallel. So if I look at this closely, I can see that I've got a pair of red ones and blue ones, a group of blue ones that are in parallel. So for the red ones and the blue ones, I'll look at the junctions. And it's all about the junctions. So what I'll do is I'll draw one resistor in between these two junctions, which will equal the value of the parallel combination. So in other words, between the red junctions, I'll draw one re resistor and it'll be equal to those two in parallel. So basically all I'm doing is just getting rid of the wire and sliding them together to make one resistor. So that's my equivalent resistance to that parallel combination. And for the blue resistors, I'm going to do the same idea. So in between where the junction is, I'll replace it with one resistor and I'll combine the blue ones. So they'll all slide together, get rid of the wires. I'll even redraw the circuit a little bit. So now this blue resistor equals the equivalent resistance of those three that were in parallel. So 1 over each of those equals this answer, 1 over this answer. And that's how you combine them in parallel. 